Hey, how y'all doing? This is my AEW All Out review, and this show was an abortion. Um, look, I know that I'm notoriously tough on AEW as it is, but by anybody's standards, this show fucking sucked. Now, uh, <clears throat> there was two or three matches on the show that were not that bad, but they were surrounded by everything else that was not good. Two people almost died. And so, you know, let's, let's just talk about it. Let's talk about the, the the main event first. John Moxley defeated MJF. It was a standard match. It was a good clash of styles. It came, everything before this match, with the exception of maybe one or two other matches, was the shits. But this match, it, it, it didn't feel like a main event. It felt like a TV match, you know. But it, they worked it well. It was one of the few moxley matches that i could actually say was actually pretty good and it had and guess what it ended the, exactly the way i said it was going to end he used the paradigm shift anyway huh huh it's almost like somebody <laughs> i mean seriously okay so um what happened in the match uh mjf was dominating in the ring moxley dominated outside the ring so that's what the, that was your clash of styles you had moxley who wanted the match outside the ring so he could throw people into stuff and, you know, do all his outside the ring gimmicks. And uh, MJF wanted Moxley in the ring so he could out-wrestle him. So the beginning of the match was Mox was uh, Moxley being out-wrestled by MJF, which is the reverse of the babyface shine. Like, babyface shine is the babyface is the better wrestler, so the babyface gets the upper hand in every um, encounter. And then the, the, ba the heel powders, and then... Uh, the baby face chases the heel out and then that's when the heel cheats and gets an advantage. But they basically did the same thing except for MJF is the heel. So they basically did MJF was the better wrestler. Moxley with powder, go outside the ring, try to lure MJF out. MJF like, no, 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 I'm not going out there. And when he did, you know, manage to get uh, MJF outside the ring, that's when he did the bulk of his damage. He ended up busting him open him outside the ring. Uh, you know, MJF ended up damaging... Uh, um, Moxley's arm. So he worked the arm when they were in the ring. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool story. Uh, <clears throat> the end of the match was Wardlow trying to throw the dynamite diamond ring to MJF. The, the ring hits the mat, you know, uh, because he's got blood in his eyes and everything. MJF couldn't see the ring. He didn't catch it. And then he had to search the match to find it. So he, when he finally found the ring, he picked it up. And when, he, and when he lifted the ring, he was out of eye with Moxley, who used the paradigm shift and pinned him one, two, three. That's that's the fucking main event. OK, um, it wasn't bad. It was one of the better matches on this show. But if it was actually a good show, it probably be one of the it probably wouldn't have been that great. It certainly was not fifty dollars uh, worthy, uh, if, if you want to be honest. Uh, the Mimosa Mayhem match, Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. This match was the drizzle and shits. As we, uh, <laughs> how could it be anything else? So, if you guys ever watched the Jim Cornette uh, clips, in one of these clips, he was talking about how Jericho puts over Orange Cassidy, and he says like sometimes when you cut in a heel promo or when you cut a promo period, you're supposed to put over your, your your opponent a little bit, right? But he said Jericho was being effusive. Like Jericho was really putting Orange Cassidy over to the point where he sounded like like he was fucking Orange Cassidy's manager. Jericho did it again on this show. So Jericho says, well, it hasn't been a feud. Like these 14 weeks of me uh, beefing with Orange Cassidy have been an experiment. It hasn't been a feud. Hasn't been a program. Hasn't been an angle. It's been an experiment to see if I could make Orange Cassidy a main event star in AEW. And yes, Orange Cassidy is a main event star, a legit main event star in, or in, in AEW. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? But... 14 weeks, and then I did the math. Um, Orange Cassidy has a 64% winning uh, record, so he's 9-5 and five after winning this match. Oh, yeah, Orange Cassidy won this match, by the way, which made no fucking sense. This match sucked. Uh, so there was two large vats of mimosa. Um, there was some wrestling. They did some stuff. It's Look, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, really, I really don't know what to say. Um, d there was... The, the selling of the mimosa was not good. Um, if you want to know what I mean by selling, look at the Inferno match, right? The Inferno match, you get Undertaker or somebody trying to push 
the uh, the face into the fire and they they strain to get away like well, that that's kind of selling and you know they used to do it in the barbed wire matches that's typical of matches where there's outside objects you know fire barbed wire uh, thumbtacks something like that uh, table you know what I mean if you're listening to this you know what I mean the way that they were selling the vats were not good okay it just was not good. I did not believe in it. It looked phony. It looked like bullshit. So, um, I, I don't know, man. So, uh, Jericho got Orange Cassidy in the walls of Jericho. And while he was in the walls of Jericho, Orange Cassidy was lucid enough during all this pain to scoop out a, 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 a cup of mimosa. Uh, out of a, out of a, like a glass, it was like tables and like cocktail trays and stuff like that at ringside too, as if you could like drink it. So he scooped up some of the mimosa while he was in the walls of Jericho, by the way. And then, you know, Jericho, you know, slid him back into the ring because there was no disqualification, no count out, no rope breaks. And then Jericho goes to put him back into the hole. And then Orange Cassidy threw the mimosa in his face. And that was a blinding spot. And while he was blinded, he went for the pinfall. And I thought that was pretty cool. That was one of the, probably an, an easy story to tell because the mimosa has alcohol in it. You get alcohol in your eyes. It's blinding. It's you know, debilitating. It makes sense. But that was the only thing in the match that I really liked as far as uh, things that made sense. Okay, the finish. Um, I really was not paying attention when the finish happened because I was burnt out. I'm not going to lie, man. I was burnt out by the end of this show. Um, so I, all I saw is it looked like Jericho might've had orange Cassidy in like a razor's edge. Like he was going to razor's edge him from the second rope into the vat of uh, Mimosa. Orange Cassidy you know, swiveled away and Jericho was stuck on the second rope. He used a, he called, he used a Superman punch, what they call an orange punch, a orange man punch or something like that. And Jericho teetered in a little bit. He teetered and then uh, Orange Cassidy did a running start with an orange punch and boom. And Jericho fell in the vat of orange juice, orange mimosa and lost the match. Um, look, God bless Chris Jericho, man. God bless Chris Jericho. I know he did his best, but this was not Kurt Angle versus Jay Lethal. Th this was not that. This was not the the young, the veteran putting over the young talent. Jericho did two straight jobs for Orange Cassidy. It looked like shit in both of them. He did. He is not giving his best. That's how you get guys over. You don't get guys over by just putting him in there and, and he beat Chris Jericho. He, you, it has to be a version of Chris Jericho that people can recognize. Nobody recognizes this version of Chris Jericho. Yes, it's fun for people to sing Judas. That's fine. But fuck that. That's not enough. Okay, these matches are not good. If these matches were good, like I said, Kurt Angle, Jay Lethal, right? Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe. That's the that's the best I could do when it comes to trying to tell people, trying to show people how these things could how these things could be good. Like when Roman Reigns beat the Undertaker, right? Everybody recognized that wasn't the best version of the Undertaker that Roman Reigns beat. So they don't, they don't even talk about it that much. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't even talk about it. Roman Reigns was the second guy to beat Undertaker at WrestleMania because they looked at him like, well, wasn't he concussed or something? Like, wasn't he fucked up in that match? Like, nah, I don't really, I don't really pay that no attention. That's kind of how this is, where everybody's like, well, Jericho's kind of chilling, you know, uh, fucking around on his laurels. Who cares? You know, Orange he did Orange Cassidy a favor. 14 weeks. 14, 14 goddamn weeks. So, uh, match, that was match eight. So, match seven, where's match seven? I'm looking for my papers with match seven on it. Match seven, uh, Omega and Page versus FTR for the tag team championships. This match was long as fuck. Okay, this match was, it had to be a good 40 minutes. If this match wasn't 40 minutes, it felt like 40 fucking minutes. Uh, this match was entirely too long. I, I've, I've noticed that this match and the Young Bucks Jurassic Express match, th these guys don't, tell stories as much as they just do routines and what i mean by that is they just have stuff that they do like there's a, an abundance of tag team moves and counter tag team moves and combination tag team moves that people just do in succession over and over again and you're just kind of like 
I don't know. I don't get this, you know. And this is a match that has some intrigue because of the Hangman Page Omega relationship and the Omega the relation, relationship with FTR and the Page relationship with FTR. This has some intrigue. And they worked the match pretty standard. It wasn't bad. It was just fucking long. I would never watch this match again. It was fucking long. It was long as shit. Then, you know, you had a weird commentator. So it would be, uh, what is, what is this, uh, the wild eye, anxious millennial cowboy is what Excalibur said about, uh, Hangman Page. The wild eyed, anxious millennial cowboy. What the fuck? Was that supposed to be cool? What the fuck is cool about being anxious and being a millennial? Ugh. Ugh. These commentators, they suck. In any event, let's go through. Uh, this match did lack a lot of excitement. Um, it was it was serviceable. See, sometimes old school just means boring, and FTR is kind of that. You know, it's like, um, yes, you can have an old school match, but if your match is old school and it sucks, then it sucks. Now, I'm not going to say like they are the worst workers in the world. They're not. You know, but this match was just too long. If this match had been 15 minutes, maybe it would have been so much better. Um, but of course, you know, Kenny Omega, he's got to have his, uh, his Phantom of the Opera, uh, theater segments in the middle of the fucking match and all that shit. So, um, there was a lot of people hitting their own partners, which I absolutely abhor in tag team matches. I absolutely hate when tag teams are hitting each other or when partners are hitting each other. It's quite frankly, some of the worst shit in the world. Now once, or maybe once per match is fine. But when people are doing it repeatedly in a match, it's fucking horrible. Okay. That means you have no fucking coordination with your partner. You know, like if you're going to do something, it's like, and it used to be like when the heels would try to, you know, put somebody in a full Nelson and then they would run off the ropes, to try to hit them. And then the, the baby face would duck. And that'd be the only time you'll see it. But now you just see, we'll get to it when, when the young bucks match come up. But this match also had it. Cause it, the, that um, factored into the finish. So the finish of this joint was Omega holding Cash Wheeler, which is, I'm guessing, the one with the hair. Uh, and he, he was holding him for the Hangman Lariat, uh, the Buckshot Lariat. So Hangman comes in with the Lariat. Uh, Wheeler gets out of the way. Omega ducks, so he didn't get Lariated. Uh, lariated, right. So then Omega grabs Wheeler. Uh, no, Paige grabs Wheeler. Um, and... Kenny Omega goes for the V trigger, which is a jumping knee. Uh, the V trigger misses, hits Hangman Page, and knocks Hangman Page right the fuck out. Pretty much, pretty much knocked him out. Uh, pretty much knocked him out of the ring and all that type of stuff. And then uh, Omega is taken outside the ring, I believe. Then there's a spike pile driver, which is probably the most tame maneuver they used the whole match. See, that's the crazy thing, right? Like in this match, FTR did a bulldog. An elevator bulldog, the the Scotts, the Steiner brothers finish hold, right? Which is you know the the uh, elevator, you you know the you know where you hold them up uh, on your shoulders, and then the bulldog from the top rope. They did that onto the floor. To I think uh, Kenny Omega or Hangman Page, one of the two. They were wearing similar tights tonight, so I clearly my vision was kind of like fucked up. But they did it to one of them. So they did a lot of devastating things, and then the finish was a spike pile driver. I don't know about you, but if I get a bulldog on the floor, that's kind of a finish dog, you know, but whatever. I don't know shit. You know, I don't know anything, man. Okay. So after uh, FTR wins, um, they leave a can of beer in the ring next to Hangman Page, who they pinned. And Kenny Omega picks up a piece of a table, picks up a piece of a table. And he's holding this table piece like he's going to hit Hangman Page with it. And Hangman Page is, you know, he's groggy. He did. He cut that that V trigger, and you know, then he got hit with a spike pile driver. Okay, we I get that he got pinned. He's groggy, and we get a little bit of a close up of Kenny Omega thinking about what he what he should do um, to uh, Hangman Page and how he should handle this Hangman Page thing. And uh, he he doesn't know what to what to make of FTR leaving a beer. Right. So I wrote down some questions. I said, basically, is it a sign of respect? You know, it could be a sign of respect because men sometimes when they do their business, they buy each other a beer, maybe. 
or is it a mockery? Is it, well, you know, you're a drunk, so here's a beer. You could take it from both, you know, both ways, right? So I thought that was interesting that FTR left Adam Page a beer. Now, his friends don't really like that he's a drinker, but FTR drank beer too, you know? So are they mocking him or is it a sign of respect? I don't know. But uh, Kenny Omega is wielding this chair to hit, to hit Page with it. Page stands up, finally, and Kenny Omega throws the table piece down. He's like, I'm not going to hit him with it. So Page is stumbling and fell to Kenny Omega's feet. And then, of course, the commentators finally did something good, and they mentioned that Kenny Omega didn't try to help him. He didn't try to catch him when he fell. And he just fell at Kenny Omega's feet. And Kenny Omega had no sympathy whatsoever. He just turned and walked away. He he was absolutely disgusted. He turned and walked away. And then he stormed off with the young bucks. And this is when I and this is when I got frustrated. Because as Kenny Omega is storming off, he's like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with him. I'm sick of this. I'm leaving. So he's storming off and he's telling the, the, the young bucks, we need to get in the car and we need to leave. We need to leave. And the young bucks are like, don't you want to talk this out? Don't you want to, I mean, don't we need a minute to try to figure out what's happening here? Don't we want to talk this out? And Kenny Omega's like, get in the car, <laughs> get in the truck. We getting out of here. Right. And they're like, they're still trying to talk to him. And, and I said, say to myself, like, didn't these assholes kick him out of the elite? Weren't they the ones who started this shit in the first place? Didn't they call him a drunk and throw a liquor in his face? Why the fuck are they the ones trying to talk it out? They already made their decision. So shouldn't they just agree with Kenny Omega and get the fuck in the car? That doesn't make any sense. So Kenny Omega gets in the car and drives off and the Young Bucks are still there. So are we supposed to believe that the Young Bucks still have faith in Adam Page after they called him a drunk and threw liquor in his face and kicked him out of the elite? They are the ones who has faith in them now. Who's writing this story? It's stupid. Absolutely stupid. So then we get, uh, well, before that, because I'm doing this in reverse order. I'm sorry. I, I, it took me 20 minutes to say that, but I always do my reviews in reverse order. Uh, the Dark Order versus The Natural Nightmares, Matt Cardona and Scorpio Sky. So before we get into this Scorpio Sky thing, I, I saw something on Twitter that pissed me off. Apparently, I didn't watch the whole buy-in. I just watched the two matches, and that was it. And I'm not going to talk about those because they, they're not worth talking about. But somebody mentioned that Brandy uh, said on the on the on the pre-show or something like that that she uh, that she was almost offended, almost sounded like offended that somebody said Scorpio Sky was a natural athlete, and she says something to the effect of, uh, "Is he really, or is that something they just say about people of color?" And I say to myself, like, how fucking, how low do your self-esteem have to be? How sensitive do you have to be to get offended at fucking compliments? Why are you, how do you, how do you get offended at a compliment? At a compliment at somebody else, not even about you. That kind of shit. See, that's how we, when we knew that, you know, there was a difference between how people perceive themselves in the world is... You know, you know, you have chronic low self-esteem when somebody can't give you a compliment without you feeling some type of way about it. You know, I can't say a black man is a natural athlete without or were you trying to say we were bred to be athletes like slaves. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're saying the nigga got natural gifts. We're saying they got talent. What the fuck? Why you got to get all tight assed about it? Why do I have to over explain compliments? See, this shit is. Fuck that bitch, okay? Fuck that bitch. In any event, this match was boring. It fucking sucked. The Dark Order fucking sucks. Um, Then, you know, the match that I really wanted, and I really didn't realize I wanted it until they announced it for Dynamite, is this match could have been Dustin versus Brody Lee. It could have just been that, and then the Dark Order and everybody else was outside the ring to just add some color. Because, you know, these guys are a little bit older. Maybe Dustin can't really go like, you know, Dustin can still go, but maybe you don't want him to go a long time. Right. You could have put the Dark Order and all of Cody's friends and all the people outside the ring and made it a lumberjack match and just had Dustin versus Brody Lee. That would have been fine. But you you made me sit through fucking Colt fucking Cabana, fucking evil fucking Uno and QT Marshall. 
I mean, heaven for fucking be it. I wouldn't have got to deal with QT Marshall on an episode of AEW. God damn. God damn. I mean, come on, man. Come on. So, uh, Cole Cabana, uh, did, well, he did the job. So this is what happened. This is the finish. Uh, there was people all over the place, people doing all types of shit. Um, JR getting people's names wrong. He called Stu Gason. He saw, he called, <laughs> I'm making fun of JR and here I am stuttering. Um, he called Stu Grayson, Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson is Robin. <laughs> so <laughs> Dick Grayson is Robin. And then, you know, um, Excalibur throughout the night, he would routinely say, Oh, isn't this guy a good athlete, JR? And then and JR was like, Yeah, they're, they're all good athletes. <laughs> Cause he, he started talking about Stu Grayson. Like, you said that Scorpio Sky was a great athlete. Well, isn't Stu Grayson a great athlete? And then he had to say the same thing about Jungle Boy. He had to say the same thing about everybody because they're just, um, apparently, JR is the one who made the natural athlete comment. He's also made some other comment about Anna J that I didn't catch because I really wasn't paying that much attention to the things he said. So apparently people were upset about that, but I'm going to be honest. I didn't hear it. And I'm also not going to go look for things to get mad about. I just happened to come across the whole Brandy thing while I was saying that I hope certain people that we're going to get to in a minute aren't hurt. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the discus lariat by Brody Lee took down Dustin. It was a stiff um, um, discus lariat. He really does a good job with that discus lariat. He really lays it in. That's good. That's the best thing about Brody Lee is he really knows how to throw that discus lariat. It's tight. And then he tags in Coke Cabana because that's the gimmick they've been doing with uh, him and Coke Cabana. He's been building up Coke Cabana's confidence by laying people out and then letting him get the pin, letting Coke Cabana get the pin. So Dustin is flattened from the discus lariat and Cole Cabana takes his time to do a moonsault. Uh, Dustin misses, you know, rolls out of the way. Cole Cabana misses the moonsault and then Dustin rolls Cole Cabana up and pins him. Decent enough finish for a story, right? Uh, so then Brody Lee has a meltdown on Cole Cabana, basically chastising him in front of everybody in front of the world. He's treating him like a regular member of the Dark Order, right? And we're, we're, we're being told kind of that he's not really a full uh, member of the Dark Order, but he, he kind of is. So now Brody Lee is treating him like it. You know, he's he's yelling at him and saying, I set it up. I had it all set up. But for fuck for fuck's sake, dude, we really could have just had Dustin versus Brody Lee. And now we're going to get it on Dynamite. So I guess that's fine. But. I really would have preferred that here. <laughs> I mean, look, look, see, AEW claimed that they were going to make tag team wrestling feel special, but they have so many fucking filler tag team matches that it's impossible for that shit to be true. It's impossible for it to be true. What match? Why, why did this match need to happen? You know, it didn't need to happen. Why is Dynamite full of fucking tag team matches with teams that ain't going anywhere? It doesn't make any sense. There was some shit about Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford getting married. Who the fuck cares? Apparently, they're bringing in somebody new who are they calling the best man um, who is going to be his best man. Like, I never I never heard of a dude who was getting married and didn't know who his best man was, you know, and and then he's going to bring in a best man. It's fucking dumb. Who cares? The best match of the night, believe it or not, I kind of called it to. Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's Championship. The fifth match on the card like an hour and a half into the show or something like that. Uh, this match was fucking good. It was fucking, it was the best match of the night. It was good because it was intense from the word go. They actually went out there. They stood eye to eye, toe to toe. They threw everything at each other. There was some good exchanges, some good wrestling, actually some good wrestling. Uh, we found out that Thunder Rosa actually already has two belts. She has a Japanese belt and uh, the NWA belt. And she was going actually for her third title. So she was just basically being the, uh, the NWA champion here. Uh, it was, it was some pretty cool spots, man. She just set up a, she, she was very aggressive. She's been very aggressive recently anyway, almost heelish in a way, but not as heelish. She's still, she's kind of like a fiery baby face, which I actually like. She's not like a heel heel, like she's cheating and stuff. She's just a really fiery, intense baby face, you know, like a warrior. And I like that. That's why she carries the kendo stick, right? It's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the visual of a warrior, like she carries a weapon. So, um, 
she just set up a chair to kind of do the the, the Taz, uh, not the Taz, the Sabu uh, leap from the chair thing. She's going to do like a knee strike or whatever. <clears throat> so she takes a step back to do it. And Thunder Rosa did it in her, in her stead and uh knee under, uh, she did in the chest. She the barreled into the um, apron, into, not to the apron, but uh, the barricades and all that, giving Thunder Rosa the advantage. Um, there were some really good exchanges. Like um, Thunder Rosa was in a choke hold, a, a rear naked choke, and she uh, transitioned it into a pendulum submission, which was pretty cool. There was some really good uh, knee strikes and stuff. She does knee strikes are top tier. They look really good. They're better than Kenny Omega's. Kenny Omega's knee strikes look like shit. Uh, they definitely better than John Moxley's. Who his knee strikes never even make contact. They never make contact. Never. She does even if it don't make contact, her shit looks good. You know, her shit looks good. Uh she does work in the stretch muffler. He's working she's working submission holds, but uh Thunder Rosa's uh MMA fighter, so submissions is not new to her. I like the match. Uh it was a great match. She the wins with her running knee finish that she um caught Thunder Rosa with. She kinda caught her slipping. Clean as a whistle, pinfall, good move, good decision. Now let's get mad. Now it's been going on for about 26 minutes. And if you think I haven't gotten mad yet, you may say, man, aren't you already mad? No, I'm no, I am mad now. AEW had Matt Hardy continue a match when he was clearly, clearly fucked up. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. And you know, you know what I'm about to piss what pissed me off about this is how they continued throughout the night to try to make excuses for what the fuck happened. Okay? This match made me mad on three different levels. So the match started out on the football field. Matt Hardy, I thought I thought the match was cinematic for a minute. Uh they're talking, you know, Matt Hardy's in character. Come out, Sammy Guevara, come out here. And Sammy Guevara shows up in a, in a golf cart, you know, kind of reminiscent of when um, Matt Hardy chased him in the golf cart. <clears throat> he missed the golf cart. He tried to run Matt over. The, it, early into the match, they try to do this 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 incredible spot off of this forklift or this ladder. Or, no, it's like a lift that kind of goes up. And they're going to, they're trying to do the side effect or something to that effect off off this off this um off this um off this lift. Matt Hardy overshot the table, okay, smashed his head into the concrete, smashed his head into the fucking concrete. Sammy Guevara is standing up two seconds later. Matt is finished. He's out of it. The referee, Aubrey Edwards, everybody's favorite fucking referee, gets down on her hands and knees, looks at Matt like, oh, okay, it's over. You know, um, you know, they did the whole thing where Sammy is trying to get back at Matt and, you know, people are carrying Sammy off. I'm thinking it's part of the storyline at this point. Uh, and then I see, you know, Aubrey throws up the X and then the fucking bell rings. Right now, if it's part of the story, why the why would the bell ring? Right. Matt is staggering. He cannot walk. He cannot walk. They've already rung the bell. They said they didn't, they didn't, they didn't announce the decision, but they rang the bell. They carry, uh, Sammy Guevara is still playing his character. He's like, let me at him. Let me at him. Let me get him. I'm going to finish him. And Aubrey is yelling like, it's over. It's over. It's over. You know, let him go. Let him go. She waving the doctor in. Doctor looks at Matt. Now they go back to the, to the desk, you know, with JR and all these guys. And they're like, well, we would have liked to have a finish, but. You know, things happen. Why the fuck did the match continue? The match then continues. The bell rings again. And I said, what the fuck is going on here? <clears throat> they go straight into the finish where Sammy Guevara climbs up this, this, the side of this thing. And Matt throws a punch and Sammy Guevara flies off of this thing into the, into the, uh, into the, uh, set up boxes and whatever the fuck they had set up tables or whatever. Did it, uh, Aubrey does the 10 count Matt wins. Uh, he didn't have to take a bump, but ultimately Matt Hardy was allowed to continue a match with a concussion. He was allowed to continue with a concussion. And, <laughs> and guess what? I went on Twitter 
not to see what other people thought of this show, but just to see, just to say, I hope Matt Hardy is okay. Cause I could clearly see he was fucked up. First thing I saw when I went on Twitter, his fucking wife sending him text messages and she's shaming everyone in AEW for allowing him to continue having this match after he took that fucking bump. And I felt like, oh, oh goddamn, I wasn't the only one. I wasn't some sucker that kind of fell into the fell into the work, right? I thought maybe he was working. No, I clearly he wasn't working. Not after the fucking bell rang. And then for the rest of the night, they kept saying, Matt Hardy is the winner because the doctor said that he could continue. And I'm like, what the fuck? The bell rang. Matt Hardy fucking lost. See, that's the thing, right? Matt Hardy was hurt. You could say that he lost and then he could go and get well. And then Sammy Guevara, you got handed this gift of putting this kid over who could have went on TV and said, I got rid of Matt Hardy. I was the guy who hurt Matt Hardy. I got rid of Matt Hardy. And then maybe when Matt Hardy's head was clear or if he's still fucking alive, they could have continued the feud later. Instead, they decided to send the motherfucker back out there to finish this match because Matt said, Matt, the motherfucker with the scrambled brains said he's okay. He said he's okay. So apparently he was all right. So people are on Twitter mad at Tony Khan. Um, Matt's wife is very mad. She's very, very angry. Rightfully so. <clears throat> I'm very, very angry because Matt Hardy is almost 50. And this, this could have been very bad. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm not overprotective of performers. And I know that wrestling is a dangerous job. I'm not overprotective of these performers like this, but Matt Hardy is a guy I've been watching since 1995. I'd be damned if I sit here and watch him damn near die on a pay-per-view. That was fucking disgusting. It was disgusting. Okay. I had never seen nothing like that. <clears throat> that fucking sucked, you know? And it wasn't because maybe because you didn't see Owen Hart, you know, like, like nobody, like, I didn't even watch the show that Owen Hart died on. I wasn't even watching that show. I didn't see that event until whatever it came out on tape or something like that. And then you don't even see Owen Hart fall. But that almost felt like that's what I saw. Because I was like, Matt's fucking hurt. He's hurt bad. Okay. He was not moving. And then when he did get up, he could not stand up and he could not walk. And I was like, yeah, stopping the match. Yeah, good thing. You know, probably, probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. And, and I thought maybe it was a work. I thought maybe it was a work. But when Aubrey sounded for the bell, I said, okay, they can write Matt off for a little while. Call it a day. They let his ass continue. AEW, dog. I don't, this match fucking sucked. It sucked, but Matt almost died. So you can't say that it's, that is uh that is anybody's fault. I know it was an accident, you know, it's not like they they're trying to kill Matt Hardy. But come on, man. This show was snake bit from the word fucking go. Alright. Not only did Matt Hardy almost die, the match before that, Matt Seidel almost died. Okay, so <clears throat> they had the casino battle royal. The casino battle royal every three minutes. Five people come out. So there's like groups of five. I'm not going to, I was, I wrote down the list of people who came out, but I'm not going to go through it because who the fuck cares really? Let's just talk about some of the things that happened. For starters, Lance Archer won. Um, in other words, Lance Hoyt won. JR called him Lance Hoyt. But Lance Archer won, which was the right move, right decision, one of the best decisions they made all night. Uh, Matt Seidel was one of the uh, surprises. Uh, Will Hobbs was one of the surprises. See, I didn't mind Will Hobbs. Why? Because Will Hobbs has been a dude who's been grinding on AEW Dark for months. And he does not even get any time on Dynamite. So I'm glad he got that pay-per-view paycheck. Anybody who's mad at Will Hobbs for being there or mad that they put Will Hobbs in there, fuck you. Okay, I've only watched AEW Dark w one time. And there was only two people on the whole fucking show that I thought had any talent. One was Will Hobbs. The other was Sean Dean, who is another black man. Both of those dudes are black, by the way. So if you got a black man problem in AEW, you got two that wrestles on dark. Uh, Sean Dean 
is he goes, they call him the captain. I think he's, I think he's from the, he was in the air force or something like that, but he's a, you know, he's a very, you know, put well put together dude. He looks like he might be a little bit green, but Will Hobbs also looks like he's a little bit green, but he's big. So, you know, he probably got a better learning curve and a better upside. But I'm not mad that Will Hobbs was in this match. It's like, come on. I'm more mad that fucking Sonny Kiss was in this match. Okay, so they, they killed Darby Allen again, which I don't know how many times they could kill this guy before people just give up on him. You know, like they put him this time in this match, they put uh, Darby Allen inside of a body bag filled with thumbtacks. And then threw it out. Then Brian Cage power bombed it outside the ring. You know, and I just said, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, like, like if you say so, boss. Like if you if you say, like I don't know what Darby Allen's character is. Is this character just well? I'm just gonna get killed every week. You know, I mean, like I get that he's you know fiery baby face. You know, kind of don't care about his own well being. I get that, but. Uh, does he have to look? Does he have to get embarrassed in such wicked ways all the time? Like he did in 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 a battle royal like this, he didn't even get the sympathy that a character like him should get for doing something like that. You know, like it was so much going on, there was so much chaos going on around with different people flying all over the place and different people wrestling that. He got powerbomb outside in the ring, and th- you know, with thumbtacks in the bag that he's trapped in the bag. He zipped into the, the body bag with thumbtacks in it. We didn't get to see like doctors or something like that unzip him or try to get him out of there or something like that. Spend time really building that sympathy. We didn't even get that. So who, who, if they don't care, I don't care. Let's put it like that. If they don't care, I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. Uh, Eddie Kingston was uh, scared of snakes. He's scared of snakes. Snake is in the bag. Snake is in the bag. And Jake Snake Robert is flailing this snake at Eddie Kingston. Well, he's flailing this bag. It's like gigantic crown royal bag at, at Eddie Kingston. And Eddie Kingston is like, ooh, ooh. He was one of the last people in the ring, by the way. Eddie fucking Kingston. Why? I don't know. I don't know. And then the crazy thing is, like, I saw people saying, like, Eddie Kingston got a call from WWE after he was on AEW Dynamite. They must have really liked him. I was like, you know, a, you know, WWE was hiring a bunch of people that was in Evolve, right? And Eddie Kingston was in Evolve. They probably didn't even know he was on Dynamite. <laughs> he just probably looked at the roster of Evolve and was like, oh, this guy, we, we fired all these guys because we, we bought Evolve. Let's call Eddie Kingston. I think he, he might have been on TV, but, you know, whatever. But he signed with AEW, which is really good for him because that's a better place for him. Uh, Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel was the Joker, which was the the surprise spot for this match. Uh, Matt Seidel is, you know, Evan Bourne in the WWE. Um, he's going to be wrestling in the ROH Pure Tournament. I'm going to do a video on that too, about that and the upcoming NWA show. It's going to be like a like a potpourri of different wrestling things that I want to talk about that don't deserve their own video or things people might not be that interested in. It's probably going to be Impact. Uh, Ring of Honor and uh, NWA. So I, I should I probably should write that down before I forget it because I'm talking very fast and I'm thinking a lot. And Matt Seidel, he's in the ring 45 seconds. He goes to do something off the top rope, right? He slips and almost breaks his fucking neck. Lands on like his collarbone, shoulder blade or something. He It looked like he almost died. And I just, I just looked at that shit like, that's sad. That's sad. You know, I just, I just said it's sad. Like that looked like it hurt. I hope he's okay. And needless to say, thinking about it now, after, you know, what happened with Matt Hardy, I'm, I'm not, I'm not so sure this was tame in comparison, but this is, this is, this was not good. This battle Royal was fine though. The battle royal was a typical battle royal. I didn't agree with all of the things that they did. Like some of the people who were eliminated by certain certain people, um, I wasn't thrilled by you know some of the decisions they chose to make on who eliminated certain people. I didn't like that, but I like battle royals. I enjoy battle royals, so this wasn't that bad. So you know the the Moxley MJF match was not bad. It was just he it was just buried in a bunch of shit. Sheeta and uh, uh, Thunder Rosa was really good. The Battle Royal was okay. The Tag Team Championship match was too, far too fucking long. 
other than that, it was fine. So that's about it. So I'm about to, we got two more matches to go through. I'm about to, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I wasn't feeling them. Uh, the second match on the card, Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express, a.k.a. the Lucha Express, because that's what JR called them. JR called them the Lucha Express. I like the Lucha Express. I wish WWE would change Lucha House Party to the Lucha Express. <clears throat> so the, the Young Bucks are trying to be heelish. Um, they refuse to shake hands with, uh, with Jungle Boy. They were trying to be heels, which is crazy because they were trying to be baby faces. Like, oh, come on, man. Fuck. No consistency whatsoever. <laughs> That's not. I know AEW said there's no baby faces and heels. I'm going to drop a video about talking about baby faces and heels in, in maybe in the next couple of days. I probably need to re-record it because it's like 40 minutes. And I know that some people might like my reviews to be that long, but I don't think they probably just like me proselytizing for 40 minutes about baby faces and heels. Um, if I, maybe I'll give you guys a chance to, to, to weigh in about whether I should drop it whole or, you know, do bullet points or whatever. But, uh, the young bucks, they do their routine, but there were some cool spots. There was actually some funny spots too. So, uh, honky tonk buck, which is the one with the chops with the, with the crazy sideburns. He does these locomotion German, uh, not German suplexes, but, uh, Northern light suplexes, which actually wouldn't be that bad if he wasn't so skinny. Right. So he does these three or four Northern Light suplexes, and then he tries to uh, do the suplex over the top rope. He's got Jungle Boy, by the way, so it makes sense for him to be able to do all of these physical things with Jungle Boy. And him and Jungle Boy get caught, like they get glitched, like in a video game, where it's just the two of them hung on the top rope as he tries to suplex Jungle Boy over the top rope, and they just both stuck, and they're stuck, and they're stuck. And I laughed. I laughed my ass off. They look stupid. They look fucking dumb. Uh, it was, it was crazy, man. They did a lot of stupid shit. So uh, Luchasaurus choke slammed one of the bucks, and then he goes to choke slam the other buck on top of that buck, which you know it's a perfectly respectable spot, except the second bump. The second uh, buck did a complete flip. He did a flip and a choke slam. I don't, I don't know why he did that. Okay, so if you if you need a visual of me explaining what he did, he choke slammed one buck, boom. While that buck was down, he grabbed the other one, pulled him and was going to choke slam him on his brother. He lifted that buck, who then flipped over and splashed his brother, stomach to stomach. How that happened, I have no fucking idea. Especially considering Luchasaurus did not use his other hand. So the other guy just got so used to doing fucking flips. That he's going to flip on his fucking brother. You had the young bucks kicking each other in the face. Routinely fucking up. All of this whole, you know, the whole bullshit where, you know, you kick. And then the, the guy catches the leg and throws the foot into the partner's face. And it's just, it's their routine, dog. They just have a routine. That's all, that's what it is. Uh, and it was, it was dumb. It was dumb. Now, there was a nice reversal that was done that I wrote down here. Uh, one of the bucks was about to get a hurricanrana. Like uh, it was a elevated hurricanrana. So uh, Jungle Boy was about to get elevated by a Luchasaurus, and the buck was on the ring apron. So it's going to be a hurricanrana from the ring apron to the floor. But the buck caught Jungle Boy, powerbound him on the ring apron. That was pretty cool. That was a cool spot. But that was about it, man. Uh, the Jungle Boy got pinned again because he always loses. Uh, he got a BTE double, the BTE trigger. Uh, which is a double knee smash. Uh, Luchasaurus did a, a, this was the crazy part. Luchasaurus did a springboard outside the ring on into the crowd and never came back. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. Wasn't nobody out there. I don't believe. So he did a springboard, like a Rob Van Dam fucking springboard. He's six foot six or something like that. Six foot five. He's got to be a mark. He did a, springboard boom or out into the fucking crowd took out all of the wrestlers that was you know, at the barricade never came back partner got pinned he never came back i see what the fuck this was the second match <laughs> I, I was just like whatever dude like like whatever you know who the fuck cares in the first match jesus christ the tooth and nail match okay so let's talk about 
let's talk about this because the tooth and nail match was supposed to be on the buy-in. People complained. The buy-in is the pre-show. They were people complained they wanted it on the main card. That's what they wanted. They wanted it on the main card. So Tony Khan, you know, he did what he wanted. He did his thing and he switched it. He decided we're gonna put it on the main card. It's the first match on the main card. Started out the show with a fucking tragedy. This match fucking sucked. It was it was not it not only was it <clears throat> it was cinematic. Which means it's just it was in a, it was in Britt Baker's doctor's office, you know, uh, dentist's office, which is exactly what I thought it would be. But it was so fucking lame. Like the acting was horrible, horrible. I'm talking like one of those uh, the dope fiend's daughter hood movie acting bad. That's how young Big Swole was. It was that fucking bad. It was like if you go to you know, the, the bootleg man, and he got, like, I got the I got the dope man's daughter. It's like local Detroit shit. You're like, what? What's that? You go home, and you got people basically looking at the camera and talking in very overly Negro-ish tones and stuff. It's fucking, it was really bad. She called Reba a hoe. She was like, yeah, hoe. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? That was, like, one of the first words out of her mouth. It was really weird, man. It was really, like, they did, they did some, they did some stuff. You know, they, they, they brought in some dentist, uh, materials to let you know there's in a dentist office. Reba got thrown in the dumpster. I don't even know how they ended up outside. I don't even, I mean, I'm pretty sure it happened because, uh, Britt Baker was running away and, uh, Reba ended up outside getting thrown in the dumpster and then she got out of the dumpster. It's basically a two on one match in the, in the dentist, uh, actual dentist office, uh, Reba spray, uh, Swole with whatever that thing is, the dentist spray in your mouth to clean your teeth. She sprayed uh, Swole in the face with that. Uh, Britt Baker tried to use a power drill and ended up power drilling her chair. Then she tried to use a syringe full of Novocaine. She, yes, they used a syringe in a wrestling match. Big Swole reversed it, stabbed Britt Baker in the leg. With the syringe of Novocaine. And then. <laughs> Britt Baker's leg went to sleep. <laughs> Britt Baker's leg was sleep. I just. It was so ridiculous. It was. <laughs> okay. So you get the picture. Big Swole wins the match, I guess. I'm pretty sure Big Swole pinned her in the in the in the dentist chair or something like that. I was just kind of at least I'm pretty sure Big Swole won. I, the paper is on the other side of the room at this point. Um, so to quote Matt Hardy's wife, whose name I never use her name um, unless I absolutely have to. She was so angry when Matt Hardy almost died. She said, "Shame on everybody in the goddamn building. Shame on AEW for this show. Shame on you, AEW." And you should give refunds to people who paid for this. You really should. And um, the show was that bad. It was that bad. And they definitely need to apologize for, you know, what they did with Matt Hardy. And, you know, I'm not an SJW. I'm not going to hold it against him. I'm not going to talk, you know, talk down to him. I'm just, I'm just fucking disgusted at it. You know, it was disgusting. But other than that, I mean... People, it happens, you know, injuries happen, you, you foible, you make mistakes, you know, most of these people have never been in this position before, they're trying to tough it out, it's a pay-per-view, they only have pay-per-views every once in a while, I get it, so I'm not going to jump up and down on them like everybody else, everybody else is like, oh my god, Matt Hardy, I'm like, why is Matt Hardy even doing these spots in the first place, dude is fucking 46, 47, stop doing these spots, dog, you know, but... His family does deserve a, a, an apology. Um, I'm pretty sure they're. Uh, I'm recording this as they're doing the the press conferences and all that. I don't care what they what he tell wrestling media. I don't give a fuck. If it's something egregious, I'll probably do a video on it on its own. But um, for the most part, uh, it, this was a very bad show. Don't waste your time watching it. It was four fucking hours. It ended at like midnight or something like that, or almost midnight. Um, it's one, almost one in the morning as I record this. Um, thank you guys for listening. 
you know, I appreciate your patronage. Um, I appreciate everybody who gives my channel a listen. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you guys later.